Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Valentine's Day. hope everybody took care of their woman. You Listen, this holiday, it's not for men. It's not for men. It is for the ladies. All right, but even though the Super Bowl has just ended a couple of days ago, there's been all kinds of stuff that's already going on. There really isn't an offseason. Uh, the Eagles lost both of their uh, coordinators, their offensive and defensive coordinators, and they're partying. And I'm just kind of, in my mind, sitting here thinking that your defense had almost 80 sacks. Almost 80 sacks this year. That now, now, granted, maybe some of the teams you played were soft, but that's a lot of sacks. I don't care who you played. That is amazing. And losing him, you might just end up missing out and missing him a little bit. You know, a lot of times we always want to get rid of somebody, and then we find out they're a lot better than we thought. I hope that's not the case for us with Kellen Moore. I hope we find out that Kellen Moore was not uh, as good as we thought, and we get somebody that's totally better. But it is that time of year where all of a sudden – there are the Dallas Cowboys talk. You know, Dan Orlowski, we heard him talking uh, during the Super Bowl on 105 The Fan, and he basically admitted that, you know, you know, the Cowboys, when you talk about the Cowboys, you get publicity. So here's the thing. Derek Carr was, you know, he basically bitch slapped the Raiders. The Raiders, you know, wanted him to work out a trade, you know, so they could get some compensation for him, and he basically said, I'm not waiving my no trade clause. I am not, you know, I'm not going to hurt the team that I'm going to. Um, so you can just let me go. Please release me. Let me go. And that's exactly what they ended up doing today because they didn't want to be on the chain for $40 million. And so now we have the great quarterback shuffle where teams that are quarterback desperate are trying to figure out what they're going to do. Because we know the Jets, you know, Rich Eisen is a big Jet fan, as well as um, Mike Greenberg and things. And they feel like they're just a quarterback away from being a great team. So we know we have Aaron Rodgers, who we thought was supposed to start Monday on his sabbatical. But today on the um, – uh, talking on uh, – boy, can't think of his – I'm having a hard time remembering names. I'm hoping I'm not getting uh, – dementia here um pat mcafee show he said that you know if you've heard it from you know uh, ian rapaport or donald trump or you know uh joe biden that that's not it he's like you know only the people in my inner circle are the ones that know and he said it's later this week okay so he's gonna go into a fortress of darkness and try and figure out what he wants to do, whether he wants to, you know, play in Green Bay, wants to be traded, or going to retire. So you have that. And there's going to be other quarterbacks, but right now, uh, Derek Carr jumps to the top of the list of possibilities. So here's where it's kind of crazy, because there's also Lamar Jackson, who um, has basically a gun to the head of the Baltimore Ravens, and the Ravens, you know, he bet on himself, and they know they don't have a quarterback. And they may have to franchise tag him or try and release him or do something. But it's sounding more and more like he is going to be out there. So you might be able to trade for him. So Rich Eisen was talking to one Dan Orlowski. And to my surprise, somehow we went from talking about Derek Carr and where he might land with Lamar Jackson and Dak Prescott ending up being a jet. Seriously. They're talking about Dak Prescott going to New York. Let's listen to the tape. Spot for Derek Carr will be where, where do you think he fits best? Yeah, I really, I really think it's the Carolina Panthers. One, Carolina's got a tremendous staff that Frank Reich is putting together. Um, I know everyone says Tampa and New Orleans. They're both 50-plus million dollars over the cap. So 
if you're Derek Carr, do those teams look good right now as, as far as appealing? Keep listening. To one, I don't know who the play caller is in Tampa. And then two, what's the team going to look like after you pay me $35, $40 million? Well, what, what, what is that team then going to look like with, when it comes to some pieces that may have to move on financially? Mm-hmm. Carolina's really good on defense. Young offensive line that I think's got a chance to be a top 10 unit. DJ Moore's very good. Two back. Frank Reich. I like New York. I think the biggest question that Derek and the Jets would have to figure out is, are you capable of handling the burden and expectation in New York? It's not can you play. We know that Derek can. That is going to be a win can or he? all hell breaks loose situation in New York next year. And you've got to figure out if you're capable of wearing that 24-7 for six months plus straight. Well, then who would be the New York Jet quarterback of choice? Here we go. I mean, Jimmy G's free. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is about to go into mm-hmm. uh, into his of week of, of darkness therapy. Yeah. He must That's know. Crazy. I mean, and he must know going into um, his 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 stint uh, away his from fortress of solitude. Else, exactly yep. what options he's thinking about. I mean, he must know exactly who's really interested in him and what his choices are going in for him to have his own thoughts. What do you think the Jets yeah. would fit the Jets system, do you think? I think the Jets have to take big swing next year. I'm taking out I'm taking out Jimmy Garoppolo and, and Gino from this conversation mm-hmm. from right now. Okay. I don't think Keep listening. That's the big swing. One, Aaron Rodgers. It is what it is. I, I get it. There's It's a roll of the dice. There's no questions asked. you got to swing big. Number two, Lamar Jackson. Is Baltimore tag him, and then what do they want for him? I just think that's a very real thing. Number three, Matthew Stafford. Where does he fit with the contract situation with the Rams? How does how would the Rams view their football team next year? Um, and what does it cost to get him? And the fourth, I'd say Dak Prescott. <laughs> I have no. They're in, they're not in a great cap situation. He's going to be expensive. Are they disappointed after last year? I, I'd say those are the four things. As, Likelihood of the Dak situation pretty <laughs> minimal, but that should be the, that would be the four step process if I was the Jets. So let's linger on the, the Ravens and <laughs> Lamar for uh, for a brief bit here. Dan Orlovsky from ESPN on the program. Uh, Todd Munkin was just hired as the play caller um, from Georgia. Yep. Yes, but you know he spent time considerable time in the league. He was Freddie Kitchens' one and done coordinator. Uh, He was the coordinator for Jameis in Tampa and wasn't retained by Arians when he brought his own people in. What does that hire mean for, in your estimation, for the Ravens and their thought process with Lamar in any way, shape, or form? You got anything for me there, Dan? Yeah, I love this for Lamar if he's in Baltimore. And if I was Lamar, I would be sitting there going, that's what I wanted. This, This is the next generation or evolution of my career. Pro-style play caller. I know Todd from calling Georgia games. Really smart. Totally about, like, hey, what do I have, and how do we make those guys work? Really matchup-based, understanding this guy does this stuff well. We're going to feature him in those roles. Um, you know, so I, I love that for Lamar. I think it's a, a, a pro-style offense. That's what Lamar thrives in. Um, I still think he would utilize some of the quarterback runs. So I love it for and if Lamar is still in Baltimore. Um, I don't know if that is so much impactful as much as it is, it seems like, the financial situation in Baltimore. Huh. Do you knock on the Bears' door to see if in any way, shape, or form Justin Fields is available uh, in any way, shape, or form? Or, or, and, and knowing knowing uh, who, who the quarterbacks are coming in, do you think there's anything like that? Uh, or no? No, I, I still don't think so because as much as I'm li- like loving the next three or four years for Justin. Me too. I, like that's a big roll of the dice if you're the Jets. Huh. Taking a second-year player, and, hey, now you're going to a new city, new team, new people, new offense. You know, it, it, I think that would be a roll of the dice. I also, if I'm the Bears, you'd have to probably like, I don't know if I'm loving getting rid of a player that, really has a ton of promise right now so um i don't hate the idea rich i don't i just that makes me cautious with the expectations in new york next season well because i i had justin on my show last week and i and i point blank said are you ready 
for this question to be asked, and I know I'm, I'm asking it, and I'm not doing that just to ha create an echo chamber here. I just know the way this works with the talent evaluation portion of the calendar when the team's got a first overall selection. You know, th they're going to want uh, the, the most for that selection if they trade it, and the best way yeah. to get the most is to make it seem like they're interested in any quarterback that another team might have to fall in love with, sure. right? I mean, mm -hmm. so, sure. you know, um, that's the way, you know, the Niners benefited from that. When they, Unfortunately for the Bears, they, they, you know, fan base, they fell in love with Trubisky and not Mahomes, yeah. you know, but, the benefit uh, for you know. The Bears is Houston sitting at two. Right. I mean, that's the benefit for the Bears is they don't have to necessarily – you know, go all in. While I agree with that, Ryan needs Ryan Poles, the GM, needs to like make everyone think, "Hey, I'm taking Bryce Young or whoever." Right. Because the the butterfly effect is okay. Let, let's let's live in a world where the Jets say X amount of first round picks. Great, we're going to give them to you. You better be dead set on the the kid that you do take. Right. Is an app like we hit because you feel really good about Justin right now. So um, I, I don't know if you're there. Catch the Rich Eisen show. Okay. So, Dak Prescott possibly traded to the Jets? Really, Dan? Really? Come on, man. It is really that time of year when the bullshit starts to fly. For all the Dak Prescott haters out there, the Cowboys are not trading the man of the year this year to the Jets. All right, good people. Even after this. Oh, Can we throw one down, man? Can we throw one ball? Yes. Yes. Right. What the hell? Dak is playing like Dad? ass today. What the hell, Dak? Oh. <laughs> but wow. go brother the game. But wow. go brother the game. But go brother the game. Wow, man. Right. You want to play like ass, Dak? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm gonna say. I feel like that guy. I feel like that guy right now. I have to say it. Terrible, terrible game by Dak Prescott. That was a stupid throw. Stupid, stupid, stupid throw. What a 